So the construction and completion, signing off and connection of this station here at Gibraltar is really important for the, for the UK radio astronomy community in general and perhaps just for the, you know, even wider for the, the whole UK astronomy community. It's the biggest astronomy collaboration in the UK and by building this station and connecting this station to the network in the Netherlands and for, across the rest of Europe, we're able to join in all of the science that LOFAR is going to do over the next decade or so and it really is an extremely diverse science case. Um, science is pressure from the UK government. It's fantastic to see the new project launched by STFC and partners in the LOFAR project. And I'm really excited about that is going to maintain scientific interest in radio astronomy in the UK for development through. So we were in charge of um, a team of four other people, uh, other students, postdocs, and lecturers, and getting them to. Uh, assemble the antennas in the manner in which we wanted them to do it. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. It means a little bit more than uh, perhaps some of these telescopes which you've just seen in an image on Google <laughs> when you type it in the search and, and you get a more appreciation of what goes behind the scenes as well. So we know that like that cable from that particular antenna is going along here and I helped lay that cable. Well, a couple of years ago, we organized uh, some of the first uh, information days for LOFAR in the UK because we really needed long baselines to make LOFAR you know, a telescope which had a sharp view of the universe. And it was just overwhelming the response then, and now to see that this has become reality here in the UK is just absolutely fantastic. Well, I think Shibot was very valuable because for the UK community and it's very important for law to have the UK community on board and it's excellent that we have also now a station in the Northwest core and that belongs to LOFAR. Chilbolton will, will be a great addition to the LOFAR uh, array because it increases the angular resolution, the, the sort of level of detail that we can see in the images. The station here at Chilbolton delivers something for the full array, which gives it much higher angular resolution. I think the obvious thing it adds, and I'm showing my scientific bias here, is uh, resolution. I'm interested in extragalactic objects, and so these long baselines are really going to you know, make for very exciting images when we have sub arc second resolution. So personally, I think the most amazing thing about LOFAR is that it has this technology which, in terms of the antennae, which was basically around since the 60s, if not beforehand. It's just these bits of wire where the electrons are oscillating from these signals coming from billions of years ago, and yet we're able to make it orders of magnitude better than we were able to previously, simply because of the increases in computing and data transport. Each individual station is so sensitive that we can do really interesting studies on a whole group of objects just by using this one station here. I think LOFAR is a single station, so uh, the international LOFAR stations are quite nice because, um, you know, not, not only are they, uh, do they have a large collective, so you can observe weak sources, like for instance this pulsar, but you, they also have a very large field of view, so you can look at large parts of the sky all at once. It's great to see a pulsar observed at 150 megahertz, which is what this is. Uh, it was one of the early discovered pulsars, but it's great to see it's still there at this frequency. This isn't one you No, this isn't one of the original four. It, it came in about five or six or seven, you know, so we've known about it for a long time. Uh, and one of the interesting things about a pulsar search is it will pick up lots of other transient things, things that flare up and die down, and that's a domain that we've not explored much at all. So I'm very interested to see what that turns up. I suspect there are a lot of high energy, short duration events, one sort or another. Uh, and I think there's going to be lots of fascinating stuff come in there. So that'll be fun. My particular interest is in the, in the surveys, the big surveys of the sky that LOFAR will perform. I'm studying the African colonization using the biggest computers in the world. And this will help me enormously uh, because the best installation of this study is uh, the first day we actually have the so I'm really looking forward to using LOFAR to work on um, observations of jets from um, very distant galaxies um, to try to uh, study the detail of um, jets from black holes and to, in particular, to see detail at a level we haven't been able to see before and, um, and just opening up this new part of the electromagnetic spectrum to, to see um, 
to see processes we haven't we haven't been able to understand in anything like as much detail. I'm reusing LOFAR to discover the most powerful, most distant black holes in the universe, exploiting the great resolution provided by the station in the UK. I'm very interested in studying black holes in the middle of galaxies. And as black holes spew out particles, these particles, as they age, they start radiating at lower and lower radio frequencies, and so conventional radio telescopes lose them. And if you want to know the history of the energy output from black holes over the age of the universe, you have to go to really tiny frequencies. And, and that's where low power becomes extremely important. I'm still in the atmosphere of the sun. Low power is going to give us the best.